Fitz's Tips brought to you by the Huddle House in Sylacauga and the infamous Jimmy Toots Holmes. Not to be confused with Jimmy the Greek Snyder, but Jimmy Toots Holmes is here Please. this morning. <laughs> uh, hey, you're 27, uh, 34 and 16 overall. That's not too bad. Either. Seven and three last week. Mm -hmm. So way to go, Toots. Well, uh, after that dismal four and six or whatever it was, I had to rebound and uh, do it in a hurry. So, uh, so those meals at the Huddle House. Well, I, I, you, you know, Wednesday I was out there, uh, and uh, I thought they were going to ask us to leave because we ain't so blooming much. But uh, again, that's a great place. Uh, it's a Wednesday tradition with me and my guys who I play golf with every Wednesday, and uh, so. Uh, but a grand uh, Doug. He hadn't shown up yet, but uh, uh, did talk to Amy and Kelly and Portia and uh, all the girls that work out there. and uh, Just a great place, Jim. And Doug does a good job with the restaurant and the girls. And it is a non-smoking facility, which I strongly appreciate. And I know a lot of other people do, too. But again, uh, if you're hungry, 24-7, whatever meal you want, whenever you want it, go to the Huddle House and... Uh, Tell them that we set you by from old Touch's tips, and who knows, he might give you a free cup of coffee. You know, uh, for those of you who are not aware of this, uh, Toots has his own golfing team, and, and, and they wreak <laughs> havoc on courses all around the area, but not before they eat breakfast no. uh, at the Huddle House every Wednesday morning. And you're right, the Huddle House, Doug Norton owns the restaurant, and just a, a super guy, and and it's great food any time of the day. Yeah, any meal you want, any time of day. Uh, and you know what? Uh, I know I may all right say it, Doug. We go down to Panama City, weather permitting, and we eat at the Huddle House down there. So we're pretty Keep much. Keep it in the family, right? Yeah, we pretty much Huddle House. Uh, uh, seven and three last week, 34 and 16 overall. Let's go out of the shoot earlier this morning with a, a game tonight. And by the way, uh, Hurricane Matthew kind of wreaking havoc on uh, some of these games and mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. And, uh, uh, Is he, I don't know if the Florida game is still on or not. It's postponed, Florida and LSU. And uh, a couple of other changes we'll talk about in a few minutes. Let's, let's begin at uh, Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, with Boston College hosting number three Clemson tonight. <clears throat> not a contest. Oh, well, it was a good intro, though. <laughs> it was that for sure. But you know, I'm telling you, I was uh, I was one of the games I missed. I thought that Louisville would go into Death Valley and do, uh, you know, they did play them pretty tough, but they just uh, sort of ran out of time. I guess is a good way to put it. But did you watch all of that? I did. I did. Uh, Too late for me. It was a good ball game. Uh, I mean, if for a spectator, if you didn't care who won or lost, uh, it was a good football game. Uh, so Clemson over Boston College in a yoner, according to Toots. Mm -hmm. uh, Saturday, what, what do they call that? The Red River Shootout or Red Something Shootout? Yeah, Red River Shootout. And uh, it used to be played at the old Cotton Bowl. Mm -hmm. I think now it's, they've moved it over to Jerry's house. Yeah. So, uh, Oklahoma number 20 <laughs> against unranked Texas. And boy, Charlie Strong's seat's getting warmer and warmer. And it's going to stay warmer. You know, I, the way they started off and... I thought, well, maybe he's got this program turned around, but boy, they have fell on some hard times, uh, lost to some teams they shouldn't have lost to. And uh, I'm going to tell you, they uh, got the little ponies hitched up, and they're going to get them to Dallas. And I'm just going to tell you right up front, them Longhorns uh probably going to get run over. So they in trouble? they in trouble. Uh, them little bit of ponies will get some big old cows. Ain't going to matter. <laughs> you talked early on when when – after Texas beat Notre Dame, mm -hmm. you know, Texas is back. Yeah. Everybody thinks Texas is back. <laughs> and you're talking about being able to to choose from athletes. Man, mm -hmm. there's more athletes in Texas than there are any other part of the country. Well, that, that's, for, that's for sure. And, you know, a lot of good recruits. In. And you look at the major universities in Texas mm -hmm. and then the bordering states, Oklahoma. Uh, and some of them get out and go up to Iowa and some to Washington. But uh, most of all, you know, I think Texas may be – is first with athletes, and I think Florida comes in there pretty yeah. close second as far as uh, five-star athletes. But uh, Charlie just hadn't done too good a job with with the program. And, uh, you know, I, I read in the paper where, where the uh, AD over there said he wouldn't fire him during the middle of the season. 
but they're going to reevaluate at the end of the season, which pretty much tells me uh, now if Oklahoma thumps them, it could happen before the end of the well, season. Well, Charlie Strong uh, said that uh, he was quoted this week saying he wasn't worried about his job. Uh, uh, <laughs> they, they all say that. Yeah. All right, take Oklahoma over Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, Mississippi State hosting Auburn. And this is at Davis Wade Stadium in Starkville. Mm -hmm. Now, the SEC Network was scheduled to carry this game, but due to Hurricane Matthew causing postponement of LSU and Florida, ESPN is going to carry this game now tomorrow morning at 11. Yeah, okay. Uh, I don't see why the difference in the <laughs> I guess that... Uh, Just go across the street, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> you know, I've been to that stadium and uh, had some bad experiences over there, Jim. And, uh, I'll tell you this story right quick. Uh, I, I flew my airplane over there. Uh, oh, gosh, it's been several years ago. James Hobson and I went to the ball game. And uh, when we got <clears> to the <throat> ball game or to the airport, I asked if they could provide transportation to the stadium. And I said, No. I said, you mean all these airplanes? Well, we got a taxi cab. I said, well, can, can I call him? He said, well, we ain't got but one taxi cab. <laughs> so he shows up, and uh, he takes us to the stadium. And uh, I said, how much will it cost me to have you meet me here after the ball game came back to the airport? And he told me. And I gave him the money up front, which was sort of done on my part. But at any rate, uh, when the ball game was over, needless to say, he wasn't there. So uh, a guy named Buster Miles from over in Heflin took James and I back to the airport after we had to push his car out in the middle of the road and get somebody to jump it off. <laughs> so anyway, when we got to the airport and got the plane ready to go and started to leave, and there wasn't nobody talking to him on the radio. So I just pulled out on the runway when it came my turn. I took off. And uh, so the guy in our, the control tower come on and said, you must be a darn Auburn fan. You're leaving without talking to anybody. <laughs> I said, well, sir, I've tried to talk to you all three times. I've got a call for you all. You all ignored me. And uh, I said, well, by the way, you have a great day. War Eagle to you, my friend. And then I left starting. And I said, well, I don't expect I better ever go back to there. <laughs> Auburn's first road game. Mm -hmm, it is. You know, they spent the whole month of uh, September uh, in Auburn. And they'll play one road game and come back and play Arkansas. Uh, so I, I tell you, I look for Auburn. I think right now, Jim, our defense is starting to mature a little bit. Uh, White's starting to throw the ball quite well. They got some receivers that's starting to step it up a notch. Uh, and I think Petway will be back uh, for the mm -hmm. ball game tomorrow. And they got him and Johnson both. Those are two real strong running backs. And I just think they, uh, you know, Joey Jones, and I'm basing this on that, took his. Jaguars into uh, the stadium there in Sartreville and beat Mississippi State first game of the year. Auburn will do the same. Well, Mississippi State not as strong as they have no. been in recent years. And, of course, you replace a, a quarterback like Prescott, uh, uh, Prescott yeah. and you can understand why. Which is doing quite well with the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. Now, is it yeah. Not? So you take Auburn over Mississippi State. Mm -hmm. uh, Navy, the Naval Academy, mm -hmm. they play host to Houston. Uh, Navy has got a pretty good football team, but Houston has got a really, really, really good football team. Yeah, you know, and they keep being rumors about the Houston coaches going to go to Texas and all this kind of business. Uh, whether that is true or not, I really don't know. Uh, but uh, the Naval Academy, they better have some real strong anchors to hold the ship because I guarantee you the Cougars will eat them up. They light that scoreboard up. Yes, huh? they do. Like Houston – over the Naval Academy. Uh, North Carolina with the last breath field goal to beat Florida State, number 17, North Carolina, host number 25, Virginia Tech. Yeah, and, you know, I saw the Virginia Tech-Tennessee <coughs> game. It was played at the Bristol Motor Speedway. Uh, Tennessee had that in pretty much in control. Uh, North Carolina, I'm going to tell you, I, I picked Florida State to beat them. And uh, another one of my blunders. But at any rate, uh, I like North Carolina at home against the Hokies. Uh, some folks are saying Virginia Tech will knock off North Carolina because of that emotional win mm -hmm. that uh, Carolina yeah. had over Florida State. You know, I'm, I'm beginning to believe, Jim, I, 
I don't know if all these emotional wins over Florida State, you can really say that because Florida State to me is not, they're not, impre- they're <laughs> not impressed me at all. Yeah. You know, Ole Miss had them on the ropes. Mm. Uh, so I'm telling you, uh, I just I just don't see it happening. Uh, how many rabbits can Tennessee keep pulling out of the hat? They travel to Kyle Field, College Station, take on – Number eight, Texas A&M. Number nine, Tennessee, just keeps on winning. Yep. Uh, You know, Jim, I I can remember uh, Auburn in particular, the years that everything just sort of fell in place for them. Is it this Tennessee's time? Because everything has turned up roses for them. You know, even with App State, they they came back to win it late. And, uh, oh, Dobbs just keeps on keeping Mm -hmm. on. Uh, Good quarterback. But uh, that that kid from – that re- that transferred from Oklahoma into A and M is a pretty good football player too. Going out on a limb at home, and the boys getting to kiss the girls after every touchdown. Mm, look out! You Tennessee. like that boys kissing girls? Oh yeah. yeah! I don't. I never did get to go out there, so mine would turn up a billy goat or something. <laughs> how many? How many times do you see though that hail mary work? It uh, did. Yeah, it did. And, uh, you know, I, th- I, th- I, th- I kept thinking back when Georgia threw the long touchdown pass and went ahead with, what, nine seconds or whatever it was left in the ball game. And then they got the celebration penalty, and which put, uh, you know, put them way back to kicking off. And then they got an offside penalty, which was enforced at the end of the run. And uh, it, it put Tennessee in great field position. But you're right. Uh, I know that uh, – uh, Kirby Smart put his tallest guys in to defend the goal line, and this kid from Tennessee just flat out jumped mm-hmm. all of them and got the football. So, uh, long story short, uh, I'm going with A&M at home. A game that uh, has been moved due to Hurricane Matthew, it's Georgia licking their wounds, traveling to South Carolina, and, uh, you know, South Carolina is just – Muschamp is the head guy mm-hmm. there now, and, and uh, Georgia's lost two games. South Carolina, not really impressive, and uh, not a whole lot of interest in this, and there normally is. When are they going to play it? Uh, Sunday. Sunday, okay. That's what it says. Well, uh, SEC Network. <laughs> they play in at uh, Columbia, South Carolina? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going out on a limb. South Carolina won't win this one either. That's a big limb, by the way. Uh, Kirby Smart, uh, he was so uh, disappointed mm-hmm. with that loss to South Carolina, I mean, to Tennessee yeah. last Saturday. And, uh, you know, they were out there top running back mm-hmm. again this week. And uh, can Georgia rebound? We'll see. You say they will. I will. I think they will. Uh, uh, Georgia, I, I don't think they're one of the elite teams in the eastern part of the Southeastern Conference. Uh, I really think it's going to come down to – if uh, Georgia could somehow beat Florida and get that thing in a tie, but I don't see that happening either. But uh, Tennessee, I think, is a class of the SEC East. I think they'll play in Atlanta. Uh, and I think Georgia goes into William Bryce Stadium and beats the Gamecocks. And uh, they probably – all them chickens just run around up there. They'll probably have them for dinner after the ball game. <laughs> uh, a coach – who was fired from Georgia last season, has his Hurricanes unbeaten number 10 Miami against number 23 Florida State in Miami on Saturday night as it's scheduled now. I don't think that game will be played. I I don't know about what uh, Matthew's done. or I guess that's his name, isn't it? Well, just uh, pick a winner anyway. Well, the Hurricanes is going up that coast – they will continue to go up the coast. I, I just don't understand how Florida State could be so highly rated and just – That just was pre-season, done. preseason hype. Yeah. Uh, of course, LSU was too. Uh, and I think uh, Orgeron's done a pretty good job. Uh, what game I saw they played against Missouri last week. Uh, had a lot of young kids playing a lot better. Yeah. Upset special for you this week. Uh, number five, Washington, unbeaten. They go into uh, Corvallis, Oregon, uh, excuse me, they go into uh, Eugene, Oregon to take on the Oregon Ducks. Yeah, quack, quack. Yeah? Yeah. 
But them dogs is going to eat them up. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Colorado, ranked number 21, is at USC. You know, I'm, I'm Jim, I'm a little disappointed in USC. You know, I, where they crawled out on the field against Alabama, and uh, by the way, they had to crawl out against Alabama. Uh, I'm just a little disappointed in USC. But uh, Colorado's this, pretty good now. Oh, yeah, they are. Uh, but I, I'm going to tell you, this may be my upset. I know Colorado will be favored. I think they tell, uh, that the uh, Trojans will go in and ride the toy horse pretty good. Number one, Alabama traveling to Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville, Arkansas, to take on the number 16 Razorbacks. Well, I, I hope the Arkansas coach gets a shirt he can wear and takes a shower sometime before the ball game. Uh, you don't look like he does, does no, he? No, he does not. I, <laughs> evidently a very good football coach. Uh, Alabama, I'm going to tell you, I, I, I still say uh, their offense is, is not what we used to see. And the Hurts kid is starting to uh, really pick their offense up, though. Uh, the Razorbacks got a pretty good football team. It may be a defensive struggle, uh, but they're, number one, they're not number one for just because they're Alabama. It's called for another reason. And I really do think that they'll go to Razorback Stadium and take care of the Peaks. Uh Arkansas traditional a tough place to play, but mm-hmm. Alabama's had quite a bit of success there. Yeah, that well, one game more than two years ago, they won fourteen mm-hmm. to thirteen mm-hmm. over there. But uh, and it may be another game like that this time. But uh, I think Alabama uh, fly back to Tuscaloosa with smiles on their face. All right, that's Toots's tips. You're on a Friday morning. Toots is a thirty-four and sixteen overall. Toots's tips brought to you by the Huddle House Restaurant. Go by and see Doug and them and tell them that the old touchy sent you by there. <clears throat> if you don't run you off, he might give you a cup of coffee. All right. We want to thank Doug and all the fine folks at the Hull House for making this possible. We'll see you next time. Have a good day. More Daybreak straight ahead.